Good morning. Lovely to see you. Great to have your faces in the place, your bodies in the place, your spirit in the place. It's fantastic. But I was just saying to Bruce, and I'll have to confess this out loud because I did say it. It was a lot easier April, May, June and July and August. <laughs> no pressure. We just oh, wore my slippers or wore my jeans and had my braces on. It was, oh. Yeah, I know. That's a good idea. This morning... Uh, I want to share with you something that I was a bit perplexed over this last few weeks, which happens. Uh, I don't know whether Rod ever gets preacher's block, but every now and then I think, well, what now? How do you end off this? And um, I say this because this is, this is for us reasonably, it's been reasonably uncomfortable um, and for some it's been quite disastrous. But by world standards, uh, let's be honest, um, it wasn't a world war. Um, six million weren't killed and so on. And if we want to go backwards, anyone got a Bible? Anyone want to start from about day nine or ten when Cain killed his brother? And um, so it's been, the world's been in a mess for some time and life has been a bit of a disaster for some time. And I was driving down the road where Ros and I were heading to Frankston somewhere, and I did say to Ros, I just can't get a theme. I don't know what... And she just said to me, a weary heart rejoices. It's actually a weary world rejoices. That's what she said. And I thought, ah, that sounds good. I can handle that. So thank you, darling. (laughs) Um, Then I decided, once I had written that down, I thought, well... I wonder if that's a theme anywhere. So I looked it up because anyone got Google at home? Yeah, no, you look stuff up, don't you? Um, Things you don't look up on Google are diseases because you're all going to die. All right, don't look that up. Um, So anyway, I looked it up and there are a number of people preaching this theme. So I want you to know that I didn't um, rifle any of their thoughts I half listened to one guy and uh, I thought, wow, got a good church because he had ballerinas dancing. Uh, It was a big building. Um, All the lights, there were no windows, there were no nothing. They had full control over everything. But they did have ballerinas dancing and they danced in and it was quite, quite interesting. So I looked around and I wondered, you know, but Pearl and them, I didn't give them enough notice, so... Maybe later, okay? So I want to look at the theme, A Weary World Rejoices. And the good news was that we were able to go and do, um, and I'll wait the two seconds because it'll pop up. There we go. And then the next one will give us the carols because we went to the carols (coughs) by headlight. And the carols by headlight were terrific. We really enjoyed it. Um, we were able to toot the horn at the right time. It was good fun, wasn't it? And uh, ran into some great people, had some fun, and it was just a really good time. And the last, the last performer was this young, this young lady. So let's have this young lady sing. Thanks. So, yes, that was the right response, except we should have been tooting our horns, flashing our headlights, turning on our repeaters. Oh. Isn't she good? So let's have a look at the thought. I'll leave that slide up, please, Pat, because I want to read to you uh, from Luke's Gospel. You haven't got it, so some of you will have it. Luke 24, verse 32. This is one of my favourite verses. Um, It sounds odd, doesn't it? You know, the Bible's full of verses, and yet we've got favourites. So this is one of my favourite verses. And it says, 
And they said to each other, these are those that were walking on the road to Emmaus. They were actually walking away. If you're not sure of the situation, that's where they were. Uh, Christ had been crucified. Christ was in the tomb. And they decided, many of them decided to go back to what they were doing. And this is what happens to people in crisis. We can default and we go back to doing the things that we did before. So they were heading off. But this is what they said after their, uh, their meeting with Christ. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. That's the impact that Christ has in people's lives. If we can grab hold of Christ truly and honestly, when, when the world is in this turmoil, and uh, it says here in that song, one of the lines in that song is, uh, long lay the world in sin and error pining. Pining. It was pining for something better. It was hunting and searching for what was better than it had. And it wasn't until the next line says, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. That's what you read here in Luke 24, verse 32. (coughs) Their souls were impacted, were touched by the very presence of Christ. The, The last line in that first verse says, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. I've got 1 Corinthians 10 here. First Corinthians 10, verse 13. But you know something? I don't know why, because it's not what I thought. So I'll forget that. Look it up for yourself. <laughs> it doesn't actually sit in. So there was writer's block. Whoops. <laughs> so you can use uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 somewhere else, all right? God will bless you with that. So let's have a look now then at weary. What does it mean? Webster's Dictionary talks to us about weary. It says exhausted. But it goes on. You're exhausted in strength, endurance, vigour or freshness. In other words, you just about had it. Weary is not just puffed out. Weary is sold and almost worn out. Uh, Another one is expressing characteristics of it. And here are a few. Tired, weary, fatigued, exhausted, jaded, uh, mean to make or become unable or unwilling to continue, become tired, so you tire, implies a drainage of one's strength or patience, a drainage of it, not just it's gone. You know, someone's pulled the plug on you and you've just felt all your energy and every essence of yourself going down the plug hole. Weary stresses tiring until one is unable to endure more of the same thing. We're unable to endure anymore. We've, we're done. Ever heard someone say to you, I'm done in, I can't do it anymore? And I remember some long time ago, my brother uh, who passed away, the last words he said to my mum were, I cannot do this anymore. And the next day he passed away. So he was weary of the fight. He was completely exhausted. He had cancer and uh, it, it took his life early. But that's where he was. And those were the words that he said. He cannot do this anymore. And he just gave it up. Gave up the ghost, which is disappointing. But anyway, that's where life is. So what we need to do, though, is in our own lives, is we experience these times, don't we? If we're going to be honest with each other, and we should always be honest with each other, we experience these episodes in our life. They can come on us at almost any time, we can be as, as good as gold and then all of a sudden you'll find something will just trigger it off and you become weary. 
Often, though, it's after a prolonged period of time. And we've just gone through, uh, in Victoria especially, a prolonged period of enforcement which has changed our lives, changed our whole procedures. Everything we do in the world has been turned around um, and may never go back. They may never go back. But if you've got 10 years of toilet paper, you'll be okay. Um, But things need to go back, don't they? I believe things need to go back because right now uh, we're in a place, this weariness has opened up another door. And the other door that's been opened up here is the door of fear. Fear has been let loose uh, and and it's it's having a great time. It's just running around and just stirring people up. It knocks people over. Um, You walk through the streets and people are are afraid. Um, You've all experienced it, haven't you? I don't need to go and talk about it. Every one of us has experienced it. I ran into it the other day at the um, (coughs) post office where uh, a gentleman who was wanting to go where I was standing did the fear tap dance around me and just... (laughs) I laugh about it because, to me, it was funny. I said to the guy in the end, I said, listen, mate, none of us are sick. Just relax, okay? Just relax because after a little while of dancing about and the sorry, and I I thought, (laughs) that's enough. So he went to the post office box that was next to mine and he got his stuff out and we didn't squirt it. We were okay, you know? But, But that's where it's at. You know it's like that because some of you have been locked in. Some of you have got children who have said to you, stay home, don't go anywhere, don't go out the front. You know, I've got a photo of someone swimming with a face mask on. (laughs) The only person in the water. (laughs) If that's not fear, I don't know what is, unless it was a mock-up photo, and it could have been. But But people, it happens to us and we grow weary So we need to do something about it. And you can take a break. Sometimes a break is good. But sometimes we need to have our weary worlds, we need to get us rejoicing again. We need to start to stand up and say, well, Lord, this is not what you built me for. You didn't build me to be defeated. What does Scripture say about us? We're more than conquerors. Does it say that? Does it say we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us? Does it say that no weapon formed against me will ever prosper, ever prosper, ever, ever prosper? It does say that. And it tells us too in the scriptures that we can take authority over all things. We can do that, can't we? We can bind things. We can set people free. We can put the devil where he belongs. And where is that, by the way? Under our feet. That's what it tells us, under our feet. So when this this fear takes hold and this weariness takes hold, we need to do something about it. So this morning, I want to do something for you and with you about it. So if you'd like to find your Bibles and find Isaiah 40, and if you haven't got your Bible, relax, because we're in a new era now uh, where your Bible has been contaminated, let me tell you. Um, My phone's over there. Who's got a Bible on their phone? Have a look through your Bible and find out how many vis- missing missing verses there are. Have a look. Give yourself something to do. But you will need a really old Bible to see the errors. But I can tell you now that many of the scriptures are missing uh, verses. Many of them that are on here. Uh, I'm being recorded now, I'm sure, but I'll just let you know that the Bible software has been bought by a company, the same company that makes the Satanic Bible. And I'm not into uh, all this other, you know, theories of whatever they were called. I'm not doing that. I'm just telling you what's factual because I looked some of them up and my Bible in my phone is missing uh, quite a number of uh, verses. Uh, This one here is two. I didn't know. No, this, yeah, but this, is an, this one's not an old one. I forget when this one was. This one was printed in 1971. 
Oh, yeah, but that's not so old, Trev. <laughs> oh, it's a bit sad, isn't it? Mm. Who remembers 1971 as a great year? Yeah, praise God. Trevor was born. What a... No, he wasn't. No, dear. <laughs> All right, back to Isaiah 40. You got Isaiah 40? Verse 28. Thanks, Trev. You don't have to read it. That's not punishment. Have you not known and have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the, of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary, his understanding is unsearchable, gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and, and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Amen. So, Lord, we just come before you now, and we pray that in the power of your word and in the power of your name, that, Lord, the weary will be increased in strength this morning, that those that are stumbling, Lord, will be raised up this morning, that the power of your spirit would rest and abide on every family that is represented in this room and every family that's in our directory, every family that's in our hearts, that the power of your spirit would raise people up this morning and give them life, Give them life in its full, which is promised to each one of us. We, we're promised joy, a full measure. And Lord, we just want to proclaim that the words spoken in Isaiah will speak into our lives. And Lord, we will find strength today and every day as we move out of this year and as we make our way into the new year. I pray, Lord, that we will go not dragging behind us those things that have hindered us this year but we'll go into the fullness and a freedom and we'll do that now in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to be praying for you as we make our way through, okay? Would you like to find your Bible, 2 Corinthians 5? And if you can't do that, it'll be up here. Second Corinthians 5, verses 17 through to 18. And it says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, just looking around, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. Is anyone in Christ a new creation? All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, if you're literal, if you have a literal personality and you read this, you'll be going, great. Right now, I'm brand new. All things are and have, and here I am. I'm new. But when you fall into your old ways, as a literal personality or per in your thinking, you'll start to think, well, this can't be right. But this is right. There's nothing wrong with this. This is perfectly true. In the spirit, the minute Christ comes into your life, you are transformed, you are renewed, your old, your old self is defeated, and your new self starts to grow up and starts to develop. And we need to develop who we are. We need to work at overcoming these things that are, that are our habits. How many of you have habits? Now, that's enough hands up because you don't have to put your hand up. Who's got a bad habit? And don't put your hand up because that'll just embarrass everybody. But we all have bad habits, don't we? We all do something that we wish we wouldn't do. But you see, the only reason that happens is because we haven't yet surrendered that aspect of our life to the truth that's found in 2 Corinthians 15. Once we're able to do that, then we will find ourselves becoming more and more renewed. 
we'll find ourselves able to overcome. And I believe that we need to pray that the, this, what has come upon us this year, we will be able to overcome. Because it's been happening long enough to actually form habits. How many of you now when you go into shops, except Coles, Woolworths, Bunnings. Oh, Bunnings is getting better. Uh, people are actually getting out of your way a little bit in Bunnings, but heaven help you when you're in other supermarkets because people got trolleys and they think that's a metre and a half is sufficient space. So be careful of that. But I just want to say to you this morning that we can defeat this fear because fear is not a, something that God gave us. There's a scripture that says God did not give you a spirit of fear. What did he give you? Sound mind, yes. Love, great stuff, didn't he? But not fear. Fear comes from the devil and the devil's defeated. So it's pointless running around with things that are, belong to him. So Lord, together we pray over ourselves, we pray over our church and every member of it and the families that they represent that the power of fear be broken in Jesus' name. Lord, we don't work by necessarily what we see, but what we, what we believe. And faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the certainty of things yet unseen. So, Lord, we pray. We pray over sickness and disease that's been in, come into people's bodies over these months. We break the power of cancer. We break the power of, uh, Lord, every issue that's come whether it be emotional, physical or spiritual, we stand against it this morning and we defeat it in the name of Jesus. We speak out and say, be gone in Jesus' name. And Lord, in their stead, we put a sound mind. We put love and power and we give you thanks for it all now in Jesus' name. Amen. Galatians 6, verses 9 to 10. This is an encouragement. I love these scriptures. These are, for me, these are real, they're bright, powerful encouragements. Ephesians 6, verses 9 to 10 says, And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. That tells me that we have to you persevere. If you've ever tried to share your faith with people, you, you'll soon find you have to persevere. You have to pick the right moment, uh, and that varies. Uh, I've told you uh, all before, but some of you may not have heard it. I was once in the um, line to clock off. Once upon a time, I had to clock off. They were good days. You know, someone else looked after me and paid all my... No, I didn't have to hardly work. <laughs> You just had to turn up, clock on. Treb, you, do you clock on? Yeah. Yep, so you know all about that. And then you'd stand in line. We would stand in line, ready to clock off. And the boss would come by and he'd moan and whinge that we'd wasting a minute of time. But that didn't matter. And I was standing there and I had my Bible with me because I was just saved. So I was what was known as dangerous. Okay? Just saved. I was seriously dangerous. And I had my Bible and there was a guy in front of me and I knew him. And I said, oh, I've got this great book. Do you want to read it? And he looked at me and I said, there it is. It's my Bible. And he said, if you ever do that to me again, I'll punch you in the nose. So guess what happened the very next day when we were going to clock off? I stood behind him again with the same book. I've never been punched in the nose by that guy. He just said it over and over and over again. I don't know if he ever got saved, but I was able to at least let him know that the Bible was a good book to read. I tormented my boss. I'd read something about tithing and woof into the office because he was miserable, you know. He needed the help. And, um, but God, you've got to watch out for that because God set me up for a fall. Uh, he gave me a boss that I didn't like. I couldn't be in the same room with this man, so I would leave. And then I wasn't in charge at that time, but when I was promoted, he was my immediate supervisor. So I had to learn to love him. Amazing how he changed. He changed so much, I couldn't believe it. And if you believe that, then you're really wrong because that's not how God works. Uh, I can only tell you this man's first name because Ray Osterberg will know him. Uh, his name's George. And um, 
He didn't change one bit, but I, suddenly I found that he was a real life person, that he had, he had needs and he had a family and he needed help, needed prayer. And I was able to do all those things once I got past myself. So I just want to encourage you that we should not grow weary or lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all. And this is the scripture that I find encouraging, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So the church should be looking after each other. We should be caring for one another. We should be able to communicate and share life experiences with one another. And we can do that. So Galatians 6, 9 to 10 tells us, do not grow weary. So if you've grown weary, let's pray about it this morning. Lord, we stand against the spirit of weariness. We pray, Lord, on behalf of everyone in this room, on the families that we represent, everyone in our church and their families. And we pray that the spirit of weariness would depart in Jesus' name. But Lord, I'm reminded as I say that, that we would pray that we would put on a spirit of joy, a spirit of praise, that we need to put something on rather than just take everything off. So Lord, Scripture tells me I can take off the garment of heaviness and put on a lighter one, one of joy. So Lord, I would pray that today as a church we could do that and find ourselves released and set free. So we want to bless you for it all in the way you do that now, in Jesus' name. And my last scripture is 2 Thessalonians 3. Second Thessalonians 3, verses 13 to 14. And this verse tells us, But as for you, brethren, as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. Do not grow weary in doing good. God has called the church together for a reason. He's called us together for a reason. You know, no one's here by accident. Absolutely no one. Uh, God has a plan. He has a perfect plan. Uh, Sometimes if you were God, if I was God, uh, this wouldn't be his plan. Um, Ever thought of that? If I was God, I wouldn't do it this way. Um, I like to do things sometimes my own way. That gets changed. Bruce this morning, for example, had all these songs picked. And uh, I don't know when he started to murmur around in his thoughts, but the Holy Spirit started to suggest to him to do this and do that and do something else. And, and that happens because in Bruce's life, Bruce is a man that is surrendered to Christ. And if you're surrendered to Christ, then God has an opportunity. You're a vessel open for him to move with. So... That's where we all need to be. We just need to surrender ourselves. Uh, And it's not as easy as it sounds, is it? Cow jumped over the moon. That's so easy to say and just so hard to do. But you and I, we can do all kinds of things because Christ is in us. And Christ has a pattern in our lives that he wants to establish. So this morning, I want to share communion with you. So if you haven't got anything for communion... Uh, we'll sort that out now. Thank you. This is going to be a short message this morning. You won't be here very long. Um, that was not my intention, by the way. I'm happy to stay forever. But I just feel that this is what the Lord wants us to understand this morning. And by the way... You need to be able to, I believe, we all need to be able to take deep breaths every now and then. Um, Because we all get it wrong. We all make mistakes. We all say things to God that we regret. Um, but the good news is we can, God forgives us so we can set that, those things aside and we need to develop that same ability to forgive people <coughs> and so that we can move forward. But this year, we need to, I believe this need, year needs to end. It's nearly over, isn't it?
That is, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you now. Just say you got to, want some good news. Um, we've run out of these. You know, they're still in the shop, but and some people thoroughly enjoy this. This is okay for for them, and I don't mind that. Uh, but I'd like to start in January with communion, where we will hand it out. Uh, we'll, we'll go back to being able to share. It'll be in, the, in our tray so that you don't have to manhandle it. Uh, proper precautions will be used, which have been in place since 2012. Uh, and before that, we used to, everyone used to wash their hands and stuff before. But we've been wearing gloves since 2012 um, just to keep everyone safe. So that'll continue to happen. But I'd like just to go back to there. That would be, I think, a nice place to go. Uh, from next January, we'll do all things in a different order. We will take up our offering. We'll do all that. Those of you that are still electronically giving, uh, praise God. And it's the church. I'm speaking on behalf of the church, the leadership team, the oversight. Uh, we've appreciated your support in that. But I know when we give, we give to God anyway. And um, so... It just happens to be that we're the ones that you're giving it to. So we've been able to meet all of our commitments through this time. We've been able to purchase things that we've needed to purchase. Uh, And we've been able to support and bless others that have come. Uh, Laurie's had the pantry open and we've been able to support them. So we've we've virtually been able to continue to do, except we couldn't meet. And that's because you've all been faithful and, and generous in your time and your money. So praise the Lord. Um, there'll be a few other things starting next year. We're going to fire up a few things that we have put on hold and um, looking forward to it. I'm actually looking forward to it. It'll be fun. Hands up all those that need a bit of fun. Right, here we go. Here's a bit of fun. Uh, no, they'll be okay. But I've still got a handful, so you could probably get away with it for, I don't know, if those that really want them. Who ends up anyone? No, don't put your hand up. <laughs> they have their benefits. It's all good and bad, isn't it? Life can be good and bad. These biscuits apparently are excellent for people that have issues. If you get stuck in your throat, they'll dissolve. Die. Quickly. No, you won't. You won't. Die, no, you won't die of this. So I praise the Lord for that. Lord, we just come together this morning and we've lost the track of the... And that's my fault. But Lord, we just pray. We pray, Lord, together for one another. We pray, Lord, for our church and we pray for the people in it. We pray for those that are this morning unable to be here because, Lord, they've got injuries or they've got got sickness on their bodies or in their bodies and they're, they're... caught up. I pray for those that are here this morning with injury, Lord, sore shoulders and arms and backs and feet and legs and, Lord, internal injuries, those that have got wounds that are slow to heal. We've got people, Lord, that are struggling emotionally today, lost in our own thoughts somewhere. And we pray that the power of your spirit would capture us this morning, that you would lift us up, Lord, in Jesus' name. And that we would find ourselves refreshed and renewed in all that we do in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for communion. I personally love communion. I love every opportunity to sit and to share it with people. I thank you, Lord, that it's a time when we remember you and all that you have done, all that you have given us. And we thank you, Lord, that you gave us life. You came that we might have life life in its fullness. You came, Lord, that the weary world may rejoice. And we thank you for that assurance that we have this morning. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless and strengthen each of us today in Jesus' name. I particularly pray for your families. Right now I have a picture of your families. And I pray for them. 
And I pray for anyone in your family that is not yet has an understanding of who Christ is. Or those that are struggling, I actually have a sense of sickness in families. So I pray for healing in your families today in Jesus' name. I believe the Lord is encouraging you and me to say that he's not excluding anybody as we gather together to pray. And Lord, we just want to bless you for that assurance this morning. So Lord, we have in our hand this piece of bread. And Lord, it reminds us of what Paul wrote. And Paul said that on the night when Christ was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. So Lord, we thank you for the body of Christ. We acknowledge suspended on a cross, but on that body, you bore all of our sicknesses, all of our diseases, all of our sin, all of our guilt, all of our shame. You took it all. Your body was completely distorted as a result of it. But Lord, you bore it all for us that we who should have paid that price have been set free from that now. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. So Lord, we pray that we would give to you now as we take your body. We give to you all those things that are in our body that are not right. And we thank you that you defeated them. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Take and eat together. And then in the same way, Jesus took a cup after supper and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my, body, in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me every time you drink it. So Lord, we hold this cup and we thank you that it represents the body of the blood of Christ that was given for us. And Lord, it, the blood is this, was what was used as a... Um, for the atonement of sin before Christ, but it was insufficient. Scripture tells us that there would come the day where the one would shed his blood for the many, and we thank you for that today. We thank you that we're part of the many. So, Lord, we give you thanks this morning for what you're giving us as we are cleansed this morning through the blood of Christ. And we thank you for that cleansing now in Jesus' name. Take and drink together. And Lord, we just want to praise you this morning. We thank you, Lord, that the world is weary, but there's hope. We thank you, Lord God, that your spirit has come to release the world, to set it free. We thank you, Lord, that as the world lay um, in sin and error pining, there was a, a moment when the, the soul of the earth felt its worth, its value. And I pray that every person in this room this morning would understand your value, your worth. Jesus died for each and every one of you. But in reality, he died for each one of us individually. And we thank you for that, Lord, that you love the world so much that you sent your son and that, Jesus, you died for each one of us. You died for all. No one is excluded from the, from the death and resurrection and the power that Christ has brought into the world today. So we thank you for it this morning. Scripture says, fall on your knees Oh, hear the angel voices, O oh, night divine, O oh, night when Christ was born. We just bless you, Lord. If you want to have a little bit of homework, have a look at the history of this particular song. It's quite interesting how this song came about. And Bruce, I think it would be nice if we close with this song again. No, no, we'll let 
We'll let Claire Davidson send us home. Is that okay with you? If you'd like to stand, please. Those who can, those who can't, have a seat. That's it. Lord, as we come in your presence this morning, we want to thank you that you have never left us. Your word says that you will never leave nor forsake us. And we want to thank you for the assurance of that. We pray, Lord, that as the year 2020 finishes, it will finish well. But I pray that we will finish well with it. I pray, Lord, that the angst and the issues that have gone on through this year, those things that have been raised up, Lord, where the enemy has had an opportunity to stir in our hearts, we would stand against those things now. And we pray, Lord, that we would be able to put all those things aside and move forward. We thank you, Lord, that the power of your spirit is strong in our lives and that we are overcomers. And we give you thanks for that today. And I thank you, Lord, personally, that you've drawn your church together. I thank you, Lord, that we were never really pulled apart. And I thank you, Lord, that that's all because of you. And we give you all the honour and the glory for that this morning. I pray for every church that meets today uh, that you would pour out your spirit upon them and that, Lord, you would revive and refresh your church this morning. I pray for any family that is struggling still, coming to grips with, with crowds and those sorts of things. I pray for a release for each one in Jesus' name. I pray that, if that, that, that there would be a freedom come back into lives in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, that you would heal each and every one of us this morning from whatever it is that has ailed us, whatever it is that has wearied us. I pray for that healing this morning. And I pray that we would enter 2021 fresh and ready, filled with excitement, as Lord, we give you thanks for that which has been and we look forward to that which is to come. And we thank you in Jesus' name this morning. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Go in his peace this morning. May God bless you. May he make his face to shine upon you and just give you everything that you need. Amen.